Chefs, what is the beef? Cam here, welcome to another video. And in this video, I've just come very, very close to breaking a two grand laptop. And there's a tremendous lesson I just learned. And that is the prevention is cheaper than the cure. So as I was sitting there about to write my daily email um, and send it out to the chefs, uh, I ended up knocking the fucking cup of coffee all over my laptop. Now, the old MacBook Pro is a bit old, you know what I mean? It's about five years old, six years old, whatever. It served me very, very well. Um, but anyway, not once have I ever spilled something on it. So therefore, I was never in fear of spilling something on it. I had a conversation with my owl lad a couple of weeks ago, and he's like, you shouldn't have a coffee laptop. Because if you have a coffee beside your laptop, you're going to fucking spill it. And I know a guy who did that exact same thing before. Just bought the laptop, spilled drink on it, and then the drink melted the fucking motherboard, and he had to get a new laptop costing them fucking thousands and i was like ah that's nah, fucking grand i don't spill shit i'm careful whatever anyway lo and behold three weeks later sitting at the table fucking about to write the email and uh, knocked over a cup of coffee onto the laptop which panic station set in and then i'm gripping the fucking thing and i'm grabbing towels and i'm grabbing tissues and i'm screaming at ella to come out and help me and um, then she's got a fan there and we're putting it on the bed and we're blowing the fan at the fucking laptop and we're stroking it with tissues hoping hoping we can milk it for all the liquid that it's worth we're hoping that we've saved it we've ho we're hoping that we've that we've got the thing to fucking work and that it's not completely fucked but the lesson is this and i was absolutely kicking myself that the prevention is cheaper than the cure if i had to just heeded his advice and just not blown him off and go ah fuck i don't need to do that if I had just heeded his advice and just said, nah, Cameron, like, don't be drinking fucking hot drinks on top of your fucking expensive laptop, uh, you won't have that issue. You know, because that pain wasn't right in front of me, Mr. Cleaver, what's happening? Because I wasn't dealing with that pain right in front of me, because I didn't have the problem and the wolf wasn't at the door, so to speak, uh, I didn't pay any attention to it. And this had me thinking, literally in a split second, it was like, fuck, so many chefs have that similar mindset towards their lifestyle that I had to my laptop. You know what I mean? I didn't think it was a problem. And for a lot of chefs, you know that you're in a place where you're struggling. You know, you're in a place where, again, work takes a lot out of you. You're doing a huge amount of hours. There's a lot of stress. There's a lot of pressure. There's also a very unhealthy lifestyle that comes with that, you know, the aspect of being a chef. Over the course of many years, you get to a point where you need to do something and you need to change. Kev, what's happening? You get to a point where you need to change. And you'll end up in this cycle of saying that you want to do something, trying something, and then giving it up. You know what I mean? But never really fully committing to that process because the problem is not that painful that you have to do something. You know what I mean? The problem is not that painful that you have to do something. The same way I did with my laptop just there. Blew off his advice, said I didn't need to fucking, it's grand, I'll drink a coffee beside the beside the laptop. I've never spilled coffee on a laptop before, why would I need to do that? And then it's not a fucking massive problem until you spill coffee on the laptop, which I just did. And for a lot of you, it's going to be the same thing. You know, for every chef that I coach and I work with, is a very common trend, is that they were at absolute rock bottom before they decided to do something which is probably the hardest way you can go about things. Mr. Whitaker, what is the beef? It's probably the hardest way you can go about things. You know what I mean? If you have to be at rock bottom before you take action, you've got to understand first and foremost that that's going to be the hardest process for you. And if you were to actually counteract that and go, actually, why don't I just fucking do something now and prevent that from happening? You know, for how many chefs have lost someone in their family, you know what I mean? And it's been such a painful experience because it was down to health reasons, let's say. And that really scared them and they had to do something. So they joined something like Chef It or they started training or they started taking better care of themselves. Um, they had a health scare where they went and got a checkup and their fucking, all their metrics were off. Their blood work was terrible. Their fucking blood pressure was really high. You know, they've got blood sugar issues. They're on the way to diabetes. That was a scary situation for them. So they had to take action um, in work and they're actually so depressed and so stressed out that they don't know if they could take it anymore so they're con contemplating either quitting the job going to agency or some kind of contract catering and taking a step back from the thing that they thought they were passionate about again what i'm trying to get across to you here is don't be like me dickhead with the fucking laptop spilling coffee on it and then going oh fuck's sake i should have listened it's like the prevention is cheaper than the cure 
if you need to be in the worst situation you could possibly be in in order to take action, there's a problem, Chef. And I want you to, I want to make you aware that the sooner that you do start taking care of yourself, the better your life is going to be. And the later that you leave it and the longer that you leave it, not only are you creating more work for yourself, but ultimately you're putting a larger mountain in front of yourself that must be climbed. And ultimately that affects your ability to achieve it and climb it in the first place. You know, that's what I want to get across to you. So prevention is cheaper than the cure. Don't wait till you're on a fucking hospital bed. Don't wait till someone's fucking, you know, passed away. Don't wait for something horrible to happen before you do something. Do something now. You know what I mean? You have absolutely zero to lose. But ultimately, the only way out of the prison that we live in, regardless of what our situation is, regardless of, you know, whether it be a mental health problem, a physical health problem, you know, external factors, whatever prison we create for ourselves through the struggles of our life, action is the only key to unlock that door and get out of it. I'll say that again and I'll leave it with you. Action is the only way to unlock that door and get out of whatever shit you're in. So take action now, don't take action later. That's the key. Chefs, with that in mind, if you haven't joined us, check out the link, give us a fucking look. If you want to join us for 90 days and get your arse kicked and be held accountable, coached and be supported by people who know what the fuck is going on, know what you're going through, get involved. Uh, if you don't, that's absolutely fine. I really hope you enjoy these videos and you take some value from them. Give us a thumbs up if you do, because it helps the channel, it helps the algorithm, it helps people see them so we can spread it to other chefs. Um, and if you don't, go fuck yourself. All the best.